St. Giles was born in Athens, Greece, to a wealthy and noble family. Contrary to his upbringing, at a young age he decided that he would rather live life as a devouted, pious Christian serving God, instead of living as a rich noble. So when his parents passed later in his life, he gave all of his inheritance to the poor and chose the life of a hermit. Giles then left Greece and sailed for France to avoid followers and attention he would have received for his generous sacrifice. When he arrived in France, he settled in a forest near the town of Nimes. He took refuge in a cave guarded by thick thorn bushes. There he disengaged from cares of the earth and engaged solely with God, contemplating his faith in heavenly things. While St. Giles lived as a hermit in the cave, it is said that God sent him a hen to nourish him with her milk and to act as a companion. This lifestyle allowed him to go unnoticed until a royal hunting party pursued Giles's doe to the cave. One of the hunters fired an arrow into the thorn bush hoping to hit the hen, but instead the arrow hit Giles in the leg. The wound left him permanently disabled. Once hearing of the incident, the local ruler King Wamba immediately had doctors care for the hermit's wounds. Giles wished to be left alone, but the king would still come to visit the hermit often because he admired his piety, miracle healing, and generosity. This ironically brought St. Giles the fame he was trying to avoid. Eventually, followers gathered near the cave for learning and healing, which in turn led to King Wamba building a monastery for him and his followers. St. Giles finally accepted the events as fate and took the role as first abbot at the monastery. For the rest of his life, he worked at the monastery as an abbot and would get many beggars, disabled people, and lepers to visit for healing. Eventually, St. Giles would pass away of old age and be buried in a tomb at the monastery of St. Giles de Gard. St. Giles loved the one true God so much that he gave up his full inheritance and high status to live as a hermit. While seeking solitude in his life, he ironically received the opposite, but he would accept the change as the Lord's plan for him and live the rest of his life as a guide and healer for the Christian faith. This is why he is remembered to this day and why he deserves to be remembered as a canonized saint. So as a saint, Giles is affiliated as the patron of cancer, disabled people, lepers, paupers, beggars, hermits, and breastfeeding. Of course there is more. These are just some of the affiliations that are connected to his life and popular tradition that has arose over the years. St. Giles is affiliated with healing of mentally disabled people, physically disabled people, and lepers because of all the people that would travel to his monastery for healing. Cancer patients would also start traveling to the St. Giles Monastery in Guard, France, which is why he is also affiliated as the patron of cancer. St. Giles is also the patron of paupers, beggars, and hermits because he chose to forfeit his wealth for the poor and to live his life as a pious hermit. He is then also affiliated with breastfeeding because the Lord gifted him with a hinged companion to nourish him with her milk. These events from St. Giles' life are why you can ask for him to intercede for you when it comes to the healing of cancer, the mentally disabled, the physically disabled, lepers, paupers, beggars, hermits, and breastfeeding. Now you know the legend, tradition, and patronage of St. Giles, a man seeking a life of solitude and prayer, and then ironically garnering a massive following of people after multiple miracles of God. He would then take up the role as a first abbot of a monastery built for him and his followers, after realizing this was the Lord's plan for him. This is why the name and story of St. Giles is remembered to this day, why we ask for his intercession, and why he became a canonized saint in the Roman Catholic Church pre-congregation. Gratias Atem Deo, St. Giles. Pray for us.